ask you, church, what's the real title of today's holiday that we're celebrating? Independence Day, amen. So Independence Day is when the Declaration of Independence was established and put a start to the great nation of America. America, this is a fact that I found very interesting, that it's the first country that was founded on an idea and not an ethnicity. And this is the idea. I'm sure we've heard this many times. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's so powerful. Today is just as much spiritual as it is physical, if not even more. We could not have been where we are today without God's blessing, provision, and guidance. Don't let anyone allow you to think that this is just another country, another secular nation. No, this is God's nation, and Jesus Christ is Lord over America, church. And that must be restored in our generation today. This means that Christians must stand up for our history, the history of our nation, and the God in whom we put our faith. We can't back away from that, but we have to stand firm and know that this nation was founded by God himself, not just people. And the reason why this nation was born was so that we would be able to worship God freely and read and understand the scriptures for ourselves. That is the reason why, so that we could worship God. It was all about God. That is why America is here today. And if that's not enough, then I'm going to read the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. If of all of the amendments, the most important would be the first, right? And if this is what our First Amendment is, it must have been so important to the Founding Fathers that we would always be able to come and worship God because they understood that giving worship to God is the most powerful thing a nation can do and the most important. And I'm going to leave us with a Bible verse. This is Psalms 33, 12. What joy for the nation whose God is the Lord, whose people he has chosen as his inheritance. Let's just thank God today that he chose America. We are his inheritance. And even if there's a storm going on around us, let's be the people who bring this nation back to its roots, back to its foundation. Let's worship God in this place freely because he has given us this right and he inspired the founding fathers to write it down so that we would not forget. So let's just bless each other in this place. Let's bless our country and let's give worship to God, which is what we are created for. So Jesus, I thank you that you've brought us into this place to worship your holy name. We pray that you would be exalted above all else that we would not just enjoy the prosperity and the blessings of this country without giving glory to the one that has given it all to us to begin with so we honor your name we ask that you'd be glorified in this place we love you Jesus and in your name we pray amen church put your hands together for the glory of God he deserves it all he deserves the highest praise. Thank him today for his goodness over your life. Thank him today how blessed we are in this place. We are favored. Amen. Come on, somebody.
sorrows that weighted him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God. But he was pierced from our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was bit, beaten so we could be whole. He was weeped so we could be healed. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Let us praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for us. Because of your resurrection, we could be here. Hallelujah, Jesus, for all the graces to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Oh, you're so beautiful, Jesus. We come before you with our open hearts. We are hungry for you, Lord. We ask that you come and change the atmosphere, that you pour out your spirit right now. Hallelujah.
nobody like you Jesus we thank you Lord for all that you have done for us and for all that you will do Lord I know you desire more of me I hear you calling out to me me through your presence where you are. Spirit of God, breathe on me. 
thank you, Lord, that you are in this place. We thank you, Lord, that you breath you breathe into us, Lord, that your spirit it is in us every single day. It's guiding us, it's leading us. We thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. If no one told you today, Jesus loves you. Every single person in this room, Jesus came and died for you on that cross because he loves you so much and he wants to be with you. He wants to be in love with you and he wants you to be in love with him. Give us, give him your heart. Give him everything. He's worthy. We thank you, Lord, that you're in this place today. We bless this service. We thank you for the worship, Lord, that we have the freedom to worship. Like Evelina mentioned earlier today, there are countries that cannot be doing this today, but we have an opportunity to come before God and in freedom worship him. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to invite the ushers up here. I want to share a story that happened last year with me. I was in Bible school, um, and I just finished it. And Lord, the, the Lord was teaching me how to trust in Him. And that actually sometimes looks like it's blind you can't you don't even know what's happening but he's leading you and you know he's leading you because the spirit of god leads and i had to drive six hours to meet one of my mentors in alabama i was in florida and it's a six hour trip and i didn't know where i was going to stay i didn't have really much money and i'm driving there and i'm not thinking about it god just gave me peace about it and i'm just oh, i don't know what's going to happen so i drive there with my friend we spend a good time there. And then I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, Lord, I need to sleep somewhere. Like, where am I gonna sleep? And then one of my mentors comes up to me and he says, hey, Arthur, someone actually paid for your hotel tonight. And I'm just like, Lord, you did that for me? Imagine how much he cares about even your lives, Amen. each and every one here. Amen. It's amazing, isn't it? He cares for the little things. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, if he cares for the birds in the sky, if he feeds them, wouldn't he feed you every single day and clothe you? I think he would, right? I think that we can blindly. That's what walking by faith looks like. You don't know what's going to happen. That's the whole point is to follow Jesus. He's, gonna, he's going to lead you. So I want to invite you guys to sow into this church where you guys come every weekend. Don't be afraid it's going to be put into good hands. And it's going to bless others. And I welcome you guys to this service. God bless.
from the places that you see fly away from the darkness to a paradise sweet dream and the lights still shine the lights still shine reflecting off our skin so burning stars are we are igniting from within For those of you who are wondering, what did I just watch? This is a new movie coming out next week. This is a trailer. It's a preview. It's going to be good. No, I'm kidding. This is our Joshua Generation Teens Camp that happened just a few weeks ago. And it was a good time. I had the opportunity to be there for a few of the evenings, see what was happening. And for those of you who have children between the age of 11 and 14 and they weren't there, they really missed out. But next year, there will be an opportunity, and we want to thank the church who supported, who prayed, who blessed this event, because it was truly a good time. All right, guys, welcome to Sunday afternoon service. I'm so happy to see each and every one of you here. God is good, amen? amen. Happy 4th of July, Independence Day, Freedom Day. We're independent from the British. Come on. That's good, that's good, that's good. But now we're dependent on the Lord. Come on, that's... That, that, that itself will preach. That's good. But all right, guys, I'm going to tell you a few announcements and then we're going to get into the word. First announcement, guys, many of you, I think, are maybe started your spring cleaning. Now it's summer. So maybe you're, you continue to into summertime. I just want to let you know if there are certain things that are valuable that you just want to throw out, don't throw them out. We have a tax sale coming up at the end of this summer. We'll, we're going to be announced in the next few weeks. So we're going to have a drop-off site right here at church where we, we will be collecting items for the tax sale. This is a massive event that we do almost every year except for last year because of... You guys know exactly what happened last year, and it was awful. But this year, we're going to have a tax sale. It's going to be a good, good time. Another quick announcement is that this Wednesday, if, there, if you have any events at church this Wednesday, which some of us do, church is going to be closed. No service, no events, simply because of carpet cleaning. So that's for you to write down in your notes. Come on. Also, next week, guys, this is very, very important. This is a brand new announcement. Starting next Sunday, we are starting a new Crosslight Children's Ministries that will be happening during the English service here at noon time. So you have children from toddlers to six years old, we will have an area over here, right here in the front where we have a sign-in right before service. You can drop off your child. They'll be in good hands. It's going to be a good time. They will enjoy it while you'll enjoy the service in here. And, and both of you will walk out of this building that Sunday fed with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So without further ado, I do want to introduce to the stage we have... Um, Pastor Vitaly visiting us this afternoon all the way from Dallas, Texas. And I'm excited to hear what God has in store through him for us as a church. So let us all give him a round of applause. Pastor Vitaly, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's afternoon, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh-oh. So let's give this a second. Everything Okay. This is a preview for the trailer, okay? <laughs> Interstellar. Interstellar, yes. Um, God is good. Amen. 
Amen? Amen. God is good. I mean, come on, church. God is good. We can do better than that. God is good. You know, when the children of Israel walked around the walls of Jericho, they had to be quiet for seven days. All right? The quietness time was last year when you had to wear a mask. That was your quietness time. Now it's time to shout. Because God is on the throne. God is on the throne. Not coronavirus. Even they call it coronavirus as a crown. It's not on the throne. Should I change my mic? Uh, Check. I can't see that far. Should I change my mic or are you good? Change it. Okay. We're going to be obedient this morning. Amen? All right. Well, this morning I want us to go into a, a subject which is not really an Independence Day subject, but you are going to get free in Jesus' name. Amen? <laughs> uh, go to Genesis chapter 4, four verse 1 through 8. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, and this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also of the firstborn of his flock and their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, you will be accepted. And if you, if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with his, Abel, uh, with his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. I want to talk about a subject which is called the sacrifice pleasing to God. I know there's two views of this scripture. And I want to, I want to focus on the sacrifice part of the scripture. I always wondered when I was reading the scripture, why when God, has, when God is saying he has no favorites, why clearly he's favoring the offering of Cain rather than, uh, of Abel rather than Cain. What was wrong with Cain's offering? Why did God accept Abel's offering and reject Cain's offering? Was Abel better than Cain? And as I said in this morning, throughout the whole Bible, God is always talking about the firstborn. The firstborn always had a priority. And in this case, he's looking at the secondborn and he is accepting the offering of the secondborn but rejecting the offering of the firstborn. I always had compassion for Cain because the judgment over him was very harsh. He had to flee from the presence of God. He had to run away. And it says, um, Cain said, that if I will flee, I will get killed. God said, put a mark on him. And he said, whoever kills him will be killed. So God marked iniquity on Cain. I mean, you can get worse than that. When God, can you imagine if God would expose your sin and put a mark on you and say, do not touch that person. That person is defiled. Would you want that? I would not. So we can con conclude with those thoughts that God may not be fair sometimes. 
by our human mind, we can conclude that God is not just, even though he says he's just. Because, you know, both Cain and Abel loved God. Each person in this place who, who came to this place, you love God. You came in before the presence of God to show respect and honor to God because you do love Him. Many of us offer our time, our finances, our energy, everything that we are because we love God. But I came to a conclusion. Thinking about this, God is not concerned with our emotional love or even our sacrifice. He is after something else in us. He is not looking for your sacrifice. He is not looking for your love. He is looking for you. He is looking for me. He is not looking for our stuff. You know, Many of you are married in this place. I think the, the reason you fell in love with your husband or with your wife or with your fiance was not because of what they had, but because of who they are. God loves you not because of what you have, but because of who you are, because of who I am. Because all we have is not enough. We can, we can get all of the talents in this room and combine them together. It would, not even, it would not even hold a candle with God. I mean, not even a small candle. Not even a, not even a flame. Not even wax in the candle. It means nothing. So God is not after our talents. God is not after our gifts. But God is after you and me. So I want to focus on two types of offerings. Actually, let me just back down just a little bit. God is not concerned with our emotional love or even our sacrifice. Because there's something He's looking. He's looking for us. Acts 17.30 says... But God now commands that all men everywhere to repent. So I just want to leave you with this one thought as well. God is looking for you and me. But also we treat God or His kingdom as volunteers of the kingdom. We're not volunteers of the kingdom. We are the children of God, first of all, but also, as Apostle Paul says, we are bond servants of Christ. A volunteer has a choice to come, has a choice to do, has a choice not to do. A uh, bond servant has no choice. And just I read the scripture that says God commands everywhere for the man to repent. And this morning, I don't want to talk to you on a volunteer basis. I want to talk to you from the other side of God. What God commands us to change. He doesn't offer us to change. He commands us to change. Genesis 4-7. I'm going to read from ISV version. Genesis 4-7. If you do not do what is appropriate, you, you will be accepted, won't you? But if you don't do what is appropriate, sin is crouching near your doorway, turning towards you. Now as far as, far as for you, will you take dominion over the sin? In other translations, in um, Russian translation, it says, if you don't do a good thing, if you don't do well. When I was looking at the word, the word good thing or appropriate from Hebrew is yatab, which means the right thing. When God came to Abel, he was talking to him about the right thing. He said, if you will do the right thing concerning the offering, will you not be accepted? But if you not do the right thing, you will not be accepted. 
this tells me that Cain and Abel had an idea of what God expected from them. It was not a guess offering. They were not guessing what I want to please God. What should I do? It gives us an idea that God already told them what to do. And I think there's uh, two, two instances. One, God could talk directly to them just like he talked to Cain. And then um, throughout the history of the Hebrew, of the Israel, families were passing down their stories, passing on the stories from their um, predecessors. So for example, Adam and Eve sinned against God and they would tell their children, you know, we were in an amazing place called Eden. We have sinned. And when we have sinned, we were dirty. God was not able to look upon us. So what God did is God killed an animal for us. He sacrificed an, an innocent animal for us and covered us with the blood of the animal. With the fur and the blood of the animal. And thus our sins were forgiven. So they were passing on the stories to the children of Israel. And they knew what was happening to them. So it gives me, it gives me an understanding that Cain and Abel knew what God expected from them. So this morning I want us to just narrow down and focus on the offering that they have brought. I want us to focus on two types of offerings. We see here two types of offerings from Cain and Abel. One offering that God required. And the second offering was man decided. God required one thing. The other offering was decided by a man. When we go to Hebrews 9.22, it explains us exactly what God requires for the offering. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. In order for us to be forgiven, there has to be innocent blood. The blood has to be shed for us. So if they're coming to God, if you're coming to God for an atonement, there has to be a specific way of coming to God. One day I was going to a store, to a Kroger. If those of you who live in, in Massachusetts have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, Kroger is a big Y. Okay, so I was going to, let's say, to a big Y. And I got my shopping list. I'm shopping through, browsing through, and uh, we wanted to get some salmon, some skinned salmon. So I had to wait for them to cut the salmon for me. It took me almost half an hour to do my whole shopping through. When I came to the line... The line was huge. It was, uh, I had to stand at least 15, 20 minutes in line. Um, I got to my cashier. I am ready. I got my stuff. I got my payment ready. I know there's a lot of people behind me. And I'm ready to go home. I scan all my products. And then I take my iPhone. And scan my Apple, Watch, uh, Apple Pay. And it says, payment not accepted. I got products. I got everything I need. I even have a payment. I have an offering to bring to that store. But that store declines that offering because it does not accept Apple Pay. I have to go and get a physical card. So I talked to the manager and said, please, like, is there a way where I can even talk to my wife and she can uh, just punch in the numbers? He said, no, we got to go back home, get back in line, this huge line again, and go again. So my offering to the store was not accepted. Because the store required specific offering. Many times we come to God and we try to bring the offering that we think is good enough for him. They, you, we think is acceptable to him, but God tells us, no, I am not accepting this offering. I want, I want to accept this offering. God is not looking for your stuff. God is not looking for what you have. God is looking for you. So the, the thing that God wants to accept is you personally, not just your offering. Offering is just a means to that, but God is looking for you and God is looking for me. 
when we look at Cain and Abel, Abel brought an offering that was required by God. It was a, he offered a firstborn. He offered the best that he had. And he offered innocent lamb that shed its blood as an offering. All signifying Jesus. Cain brought an offering that he thought God wanted. Cain knew what was required, but he decided to bring a sacrifice of his own will. He decided maybe uh, God is a little bit outdated. You know, maybe uh, credit cards are outdated. I should just go with my Apple Pay. You know, we live in 21st century. And God will accept my offering. But God said, no, I'm not outdated. God actually has no date at all. He's yesterday, today, and forever. He's always there. So Cain was trying to come to him with something more maybe modernized. Something that's, that's, uh, that, that he thought is better than what God has required. So he offered him from the fruit of the ground. But see, the thing is, the fruit of the ground has no blood. The fruit of the ground has nothing to do with Jesus. The lamb has to do everything to do with Jesus. Because to forgive our sins, an innocent life has to be offered. So there was no sign of Jesus in his offering. So Cain brought what was easier probably for him. He didn't have to go to Abel because he had no lamb. He, he didn't have to go buy and work for that offering. All he had to do is just bring what he had. He also did not want to deal with all the mess of sacrificing an animal. Or in other words, he did not want to study God's word to see exactly what God is looking for. Abel knew how to approach God because 11, Hebrews 11 fourth says, by faith, Abel brought a God to God a better offering than Cain did. Hebrews 10, 19 says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holy, holiest by the blood of Jesus. The only, the only way we can enter the holy of holiness is through the blood of Jesus. Cain came to God with his works. It says that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Galatians 2.16 says, Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, even, even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Since by the law, by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. So what Cain did, Cain offered of the produce of his field. Cain went back, Cain went back to his field and started gathering all the fruits, vegetables, uh, the ground, the, the seeds and whatever he had. He, was, he started working towards the offering. Abel, on the other side, was not working towards the offering. All he had to do is just bring the lamb and sacrifice the lamb. There was no work required. Cain had to go and get his offering. He did his best. He used his, all of his talents because those people who till the ground, who have a garden, their pride is their garden. All of their work is, their, is in their garden. You till the ground. You uh, water the ground. You take care of your garden. You take care of your fruits. You take care of your vegetables. So what he did is he got all that he, that he thought was the best. He brought it before God. You know, it's, it's kind of like when you, when you're, when, for example, your father wanted to eat an uh, egg sandwich for breakfast. But you made him an amazing omelet with uh, fruits and vegetable, uh, vegetables in there and, and some dill and some green onions and all that stuff. You put your heart in it. And then he comes in and says, I didn't ask for this. I don't want this. I want an egg sandwich. 
I'm, I'm not looking for an omelet. You know, sometimes with our works, we're overdoing our stuff. We must understand that salvation is not earned by our works. We cannot earn God's favor. We cannot. No matter how much you try, and that is why when Cain heard those words from God, he was deeply disappointed because he, he was trying to please God. He was trying to find an offering that could please God. Something different, something that's uh, out of this world maybe. Something that's, something that's uh, so unique. But that's not what God required. Many times we overdo our ministry. Many times we overdo our stuff. We're looking for some kind of a unique thing. But we're missing the pattern of the heaven. Pattern that God shows to us. You know, I'm a worship leader as well. When I lead worship, I understand that there's a pattern to God's presence. In the modern culture, the worship just, uh, people just jump right into worship. Right into that intimate place without going through the whole process. God said there's a process. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in, in your heart. Enter his courts with praise. When you enter with thanksgiving, you're attracting God. Our petitions do not attract God. The fact that I'm singing, Lord, come here, visit me, it does not attract him at all. Because the Bible says thanksgiving is an incense to him. That offering of thanksgiving and praise is an incense to him. When God feels that, here's the sound of praise and worship. I'm so glad we started with the song, of, uh, shout out your name. Then we went to, in Jesus' name, God is fighting. We started proclaiming God's mercy. And when, when uh, one of the guys read the scripture, I felt that God's presence just, just kind of just uh, ascend in this place. Because we started with the right pattern. God requires, that God doesn't require petitions. God requires his pattern when we follow his pattern. So I want to compare this to our lives. We understand what God desires from us. We have a word of God. We have Bible that tells us what God requires of us. But we still choose to go our way because it's easier to go our way. I don't have to dig. I don't have to study. I don't have to... Uh, look at God's word all I have to do is just uh, maybe look at some other uh, church and just take their pattern and just what's trending right now go along that, those lines but God is not looking for that God is looking for a sacrifice that you bring from your heart for you we like to control what we offer to God we love to live in patterns. We love to live in patterns. We create traditions. We create religions. Simply because we love to duplicate what worked in the past. So we don't have to ask of God. So we don't have to petition God of more things. So we don't have to pour our bodies on the sacrifice of the altar. So we, we can just copy this thing and just uh, go by our flesh. Make it easier for us. The whole point that I'm trying to bring right now is that God requires us. But we sometimes think we know better. And we will do our works. We will do everything to, in order to attract God when he's not even looking for that. We often deceive ourselves surrounding ourselves with the business of ministry. Thinking that when we're serving God, when we're offering our time, we're doing justice to Him. He's pleased with that. God is not pleased with our ministry that does not include us. God, does not, God is not pleased with our giving if there is no heart in it. So dear church, this morning... I just feel this over, over me right now. I feel the presence of God in this place. And I feel God speaking to us. 
He is looking for you and He is looking for me. He is not looking for our gifts. He is not looking for our talents. He is looking for you and He is looking for me. The first thing that God has asked when Adam sinned, Adam, where are you? He never said, Adam, what have you done? He has not attacked him personally. He said, Adam, where are you? The first thing God said to Cain was, Cain, where are you? There is sin right at your door. Rule over your sin. Don't let that sin enter you. Because the moment we go away from God's presence, the moment we start seeking our will, God's will goes away. God's will is done in our life. The moment we start going after the things of the world, the, even the trends, and stop seeking God, that same moment, God's presence descends. I think one of the saddest verses in the Bible, one of the saddest verses in the Bible, um, just a few verses down, one says, and Cain left God's presence. God came to him and said, Cain, I want to restore you. But Cain said, no. You don't want to restore me. He did not even believe God. He left God's presence. I feel that God is calling us this morning to restoration. We're about to enter the communion with God. I want you to look inside of your heart. Test yourself this morning. Test yourself. Where are you right now? What offering are you bringing to the Lord? Are you offering what God required? Or are you offering to God what He, what you decided? That's a big difference. A very big difference. I want us to read Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable worship God's one God wants us our bodies our flesh to be on the altar he wants our flesh to die completely I know there's a lot of things that are trending today but trends come and trends go I've heard many messages already that came and they left. Whatever is not birthed in the Spirit will always die. Whatever is birthed in the Spirit will always live. And what's birthed in the Spirit is not birthed in your decision or in your offering. It burns. It bursts inside of you when you yourself put yourself on the altar and say, God, here I am. I don't have talents. I have nothing. I remember Catherine Kuhlman, I was watching one of her uh, sermons and she said that God is not looking for golden vessels. He's not looking for yielded vessels. He's looking for available less vessels. He's not looking for your talent. Believe me, if He wants to anoint you with a talent, He will. He'll give you such a talent that nobody will ever see. So when we start advertising our talents, when we start advertising ourselves, we begin to say to God that, Lord, I don't want to go, I don't want to put my body in a sacrifice. I, I, I just want to use my talent, I bring you my offering, what I have. Let's stand on our feet right now.
Lord, right now, this early afternoon, we're standing before your presence. Lord, I'm asking you to convict us. Convict us in our selfishness. When we try to use your holiness in our gain. When we try to impress others using your presence. Forgive us, Lord. This morning, I don't want to bring an offering to you that I have decided. I want to bring an offering to you that you want from me. I want to bring myself. And Lord, as a church, we're standing here. We bring ourselves as an offering to you. Take us. Mold us. Do whatever you want to do with us, Lord. Because we're not of our own. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to you. And make it an acceptable act of worship. In Jesus' name, Lord. You are the light in me. The fire burning inside of me Jesus Holy Spirit come on let's sing that you are the light in me the fire burning inside of me you yeah. 
Come on, put yourself on the altar this the morning. fire burning inside of me. Living hope. Breath of heaven breathing life in me. Oh, Holy Spirit. Consume me. Consume me with your fire. Consume us, Lord. speak into your spirit if you want to offer your life as a living sacrifice to him the altars are open right now this is not a an altar call for in salvation even though if you need Christ if you need salvation come down to the front this is an altar call right now if you want to dedicate your life to God if you want to stop living for yourself if you want God's will in your life God is calling you forward. Holy Spirit is calling you forward right now. It's time we stop living to ourselves. It's time we stop living for ourselves. It is time to seek God. It is time to bring our, our, our lives on the altar before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Consume me with your fire consume me with your fire holy 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 spirit consume me lord consume me with your fire Consume our sacrifice with your fire. Purify us. By your hands up and we shall be, Lord, whiter than the snow. Purify our emotions and thoughts. Purify our ideas, Lord. Purify us in Jesus' name. Bye. 
Glory to you, Lord. We worship you from sincere hearts. Lord, fill us with your love. Your spirit is embracing us so sincerely today. And I thank you for your renewal. I thank you for the fresh breath that you've brought before us today. I thank you, Lord. Lord, it's so pleasant for us to know that we are your children. And you've lowered yourself so close to us. Hallelujah, glory to you. We worship you, we worship you. You are the best thing that we could have. You're the greatest, most valuable person in our lives. Hallelujah, we thank you for your Holy Spirit for his work in my life I thank you Lord bless the remaining portion of this service in the name of Jesus Christ Amen I'd ask you to remain on your feet Такое удивительное Божье присутствие. Дорогие христиане, берегите то, что вы получили сегодня. Берегите ваши уста, ваши глаза. Берегите это великая ценность, которую Бог дает сегодня для нас. Guard this that the Lord has given you today. Hallelujah! Слава Богу за Его присутствие. Glory to God for His presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Мы будем совершать хлебопреломление. We'll come forth to partake in the communion today. Но несколько слов сначала я скажу о сегодняшнем дне. But just a few words I'd like to share with you about today. Uh, happy. Independence Day. Боже, благослови Америку. God bless America. Господи, благослови народ в Америке. God bless the people in America. Бог дал нам великое благословение жить в этой стране. God has given us a great blessing to live in this country. Дорогие молодые люди, если вы родились здесь, и вы, может быть, не знаете разницы, что значит жить в другой стране. Dear young people, if you were born into this nation, maybe you don't know what it means to live in another country. Есть жизнь людей совершенно другая в других странах. Because people live entirely different lives in different countries. But God has given us the greatest blessing. Out of 7 billion people here on this earth, perhaps 99% would wish to live in this country. Glory to God for America. Glory to God for the blessing that we have за ту свободу, которую мы имеем. Хотя, как граждане этой страны, мы понимаем, что настоящая свобода только у Иисуса Христа. But even as citizens of this great nation, we understand that the greatest gift comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. Слава Господу за все, что мы имеем. For everything that we have. Бог благословил эту землю. Она видела великую славу Божью. God has blessed this land, and this land has seen some of the greatest glory of God. Великое пробуждение прямо в этой местности. A great revival that happened not far from this place. Много молитвенных пробуждений в Америке. So many prayer revivals in this country. The revival on Azusa Street. Listen carefully. Because we're still waiting for the greatest revival to come. 
America is still waiting for the greatest revival to come. A revival this world has never seen. That this earth has never known. Be prepared and pray for this. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, bless America. We will have communion now. This great celebration that we do in remembrance through communion. The broken bread. The wine. The bread being the broken body of Christ. And the spilled blood. These are symbols of our freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today I put a black suit on and a red tie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Robert also has a nice tie on. But brothers and sisters, let us come closer into this great act. The Lord has blessed us. Last Sunday we had baptism service. 19 people joined the church of God. The majority of which are here amongst us today. Glory to God. Let me say to you what I always want to say. When we come together in communion, we confirm the covenant that we entered into with him 2,000 years ago. There was the greatest covenant ever confirmed between God and man. And when we partake of this ministry, we confirm that we are in that covenant with him. Oh, this is so much. It's a great blessing. And we'll read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and on. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who drinks and eats in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself because he does not discern the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Let us pray for the bread. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so humbled to be in your presence. We are so humbled to be, Father, standing in front of you. And Father, we are thankful that 2,000 years ago on that cross, your body was broken. For each and every one of us, your body was broken. Jesus, for you endured pain beyond what we can ever imagine. For you endured pain, Jesus, for each and every one of us, for our sins, for our redemption your body was broken and your blood was shed and father we pray that we would be constantly reminded of the sacrifice that you made 2,000 years ago that it would humble us Lord Jesus that father we would know Lord Jesus that we are standing in this place free forgiven washed clean by your blood is only because of the sacrifice that you have made on the cross and father we thank you again and again for your body which was broken we love you Jesus we thank you and we we bless this bread we bless this body in Jesus mighty name amen how precious is my Savior's blood the beauty of heaven 
wrapped in my shame The image of love upon death frame If having my heart was worth the pain What joy could you see beyond the grave?
Какие удивительные слова этой песни. What wonderful words to this song. Когда я смотрю на крест, я вижу свободу. When I look upon the cross, I see freedom. Когда я смотрю на крест, я вижу Иисуса. When I look upon the cross and I see Jesus. Братья и сестры, я вам скажу обратный процесс. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you this process. Когда Иисус смотрит, когда Небесный Отец смотрит через кровь Иисуса Христа на нас. But what happens when God looks at us through the blood of Jesus? Он видит вас святыми и праведными. He sees you as holy and righteous. Омытые кровью Иисуса. Cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Capable, made, redeemed. Hallelujah. So this is real. This is true. This is what true independence is. And Independence Day for us is not just once a year. We live in independence. Let us pray and bless the cup. Heavenly Father, we come before you. And we bless your name. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the redemption that we have, that we are not strangers or orphans anymore, but your blood has redeemed us. Your blood has purchased us. And today we rise as sons and daughters. We rise as ambassadors. We rise as members of your body, of your church, of your family, of your kingdom, Lord. And we rise up today, not in weakness, but in boldness and in power to proclaim the life that we have now, the life that we carry, the banner that flies eyes above us. We bless your name, Jesus, for the life that we have. We are bound no more, but we rise up in freedom. We rise up in the blood of Jesus. We rise up to be the people, the church that you have called us to be. And we thank you that all of this is made possible through your blood, that we are made righteous, we are made holy, and we thank you, O Heavenly Father, and we bless your holy name. Amen.
Jesus. We love you for, we thank you for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for uh, that you die on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, that um, blood of Jesus can wash any sin. If our sin will be like a mountain, big mountain, your blood will wash away any sin. Thank you, Jesus. We love you so much. And today we uh, remember about you die on the cross. Today we remember that you die for us. Thank you, Jesus. We love you so much. We bless your name because Jesus, amen. Amen. It is such a great day to be alive here on this Independence Sunday, on Communion Sunday. And as we wrap up this church service, we just want to say that we are so honored that you've joined us today and that this altar remains open for you in the event that you would like prayer, that you would like to come forward and intercede on someone's behalf. Service is coming to an end, but this altar is here and the Holy Spirit is still moving, so we welcome you to do that. And we also invite you to come into the cafe if you're a first-time visitor or guest in our house. We'd love to treat you with a cup of New England's finest caffeine so we can join you there for fellowship. We love you. We honor you. And be blessed and be the light that God has called you to be. Amen.